So... I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Um, well, yeah, actually, I'm I'm just about to make a, a video on, on horror films for Halloween. You like scary movies? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess it depends exactly what you mean by scary movie. There's thrillers and there's slasher films, there's psychological dramas. You tell me. Um, well, yeah, I was just about to get into it with the guys and let them know kind of films that I would suggest they watch for Halloween. It's completely subjective, to be honest. I want to know who I'm looking at. Oh, it's Diane Jennings, aka Irish Girl. You're watching my YouTube channel. Can I do the video now? Rude. So, every Halloween I find myself googling what horror films I should watch on the big night. It usually falls on a weeknight and I tend to go out at the weekends, which you'll know if you looked at my Instagram lately. And I want to watch something that's in keeping with the mood of the night. When I went to make this list, I consulted Twitter to kind of give me a reminder of films I might have seen or suggest some other things. And you guys gave me a ton of ideas. I wanted to steer clear of stuff everybody might have seen, like The Exorcist or The Shining. Hocus Pocus is a very Halloween-y film. Even recent stuff like It Follows and Get Out, a lot of people have seen. My list is very ambiguous in its context. They're just basically things I think you could watch on Halloween night. My list, and I'll put what I want on it. And you might enjoy them too. Before I do get started, I know it's a head wreck, but if you guys watch my videos, can you please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell because I have some really cool stuff coming up, especially for Halloween night. You're not going to want to miss it. So coming in at number 10, it's a classic Stepford Wives, not the remake. The remake actually has its own value. It's a very funny, quirky, offbeat comedy, but the original Stepford Wives is just scary as... If you are a younger person and the cinematic quality of older movies puts the fear of God in you, just bear with me for like 10 minutes of the film and you're going to not regret it. What I really liked about this film was how much I could relate to it. You know when you see people get into relationships and then they suddenly change? The fear of moving to a new place and changing, things you don't understand. And being the outsider looking in. Yes, it ties in with the sociology of that era, but it's definitely not something that's alien to us now. If you can tie it into something you can relate to. I watched this film with my mother when I was about 10 and the last five minutes of the film, oh my God, they will stay with you forever. That scene, I can't tell you because it's the last five minutes, but just go and watch it if you want to get freaked out and let a movie get inside your head. Next up, we have a much more recent film, The Witch. And this is a very grown up horror film. It's not a teen slasher, so maybe skip this one if that's what you're looking for. I'm told there was some backlash after the film came out because the trailer made it out to be this really creepy, fast paced film and it was kind of much more slow and meaningful and lets the scares creep upon you. It has the old horror film trope of a young woman reaching her sexuality and becoming a threat. Traditionally, the female reaching pubescence has been a metaphor for the Eve temptation thing. Women are scary when they get grown up. But that's just one aspect of what the film is. It's just a cool, cool film and one you should definitely check out if the idea of spooky, creepy things are your jam. Next up, we have Let the Right One In, not the remake, the original. The remake was frankly pants. And I know it sounds like a snobbery thing to say that, but it really, really was. The kids that they cast as the characters just didn't have the edge. And I know why they remade it, because it was in a foreign language. <gasps> It's okay if a film is in a foreign language. You really forget about the subtitles after a few minutes. The kids in it are beyond creepy. And I don't know about you, but if a kid can creep you out in a film, they just reach you a height of super creepiness. In the remake, they're real Hollywood polished little actors, whereas in the original, there's just a cool awkwardness about them. The story is twisted and dark and you need to see it. Number seven, I couldn't make this list without acknowledging Stephen King. He is the icon of writing amazingly scary films. And frankly, this entire list could be Stephen King movies based on books. But I stumbled upon Gerald's game completely out of the blue one day when I was watching Netflix. And you know the whole don't judge a book by its cover? Well, don't judge a film by its screen grab thumbnails but i press play for some reason and oh my god this really gets in your head a lot of horror films you find yourself going i would never have made that decision why is she doing that why is this this way but this horror film i can actually put myself in her shoes and be like oh my god there is nothing she can do she tried everything that you would have possibly tried to do it just 
happened and she's this character in this situation and you just want her to try and get out. And there is a cool monster type thing. I don't want to spoil the film for you, but just do check it out if you want to watch a film where the protagonist is doing all the things that you would do. Next, I really needed to put a funny one on this list because some Halloweens, you want to watch a funny film and I don't know how mainstream Shaun of the Dead is, but it's one that a couple of my friends hadn't seen. It's one of those sort of hybrid indie films that's Brit based and it's part of the Cornetto trilogy. You don't really need to know about that, but it's a cool Easter egg. And that's what I like about the film. There are a ton of Easter eggs, but you can watch it without knowing anything about any of the other films and just have a giggle, but also be scared at the same time. The guts and gore of the film, both literally and metaphorically speaking, are so cool. Cinematically, there's a lot of foreshadowing and all that kind of thing, but on the base of it, it's just a really silly, scary, gory film. So go check it out, laugh and scream at the same time. How does that even work? <laughs> I don't know. Next up, we have Good Night Mommy, which completely takes you by surprise. It's one of those classic horror films about the psychology between a parent and a child, and when that relationship gets messed up. It has a really cool twist in it, which means I'm kind of limited in what I can say here, but it is a visual masterpiece. So if you like your movies to be aesthetically dynamic, have a look and get freaked out at the same time. <laughs> the next one is not a traditional horror film but it does follow on about the whole parent child nature versus nurture thing it's the film we need to talk about kevin and i've watched this film a bunch of times now because it's so interesting this film does not dumb down for its audience it really makes you think and it doesn't give you all the answers i go back and forth on the big question that it kind of asks its viewer and i hope you will too Every actor in this film is just outstanding. How they play their roles and emotions are complex and multifaceted. It's not a simple, this person is scary, this person is good kind of thing. The lines are really, really blurry and it freaked me out. So if that's what you want from your Halloween night, have a look. Number three, there is a lot of snobbery surrounding the found footage genre. And if you think it's cool to jump on board and say, found footage is so naff, just go away because I think you're wrong. Yes, there are some films that have done found footage in a cheap and uninspired way, but this one is not like that. Creep is genuinely scary. And it scared me because in society, we tend to be polite, even when somebody gives us the heebie jeebies. You find yourself asking, is this person just quirky or are they actually a threat to me? You just don't know. And that's something that I think we can all relate to. We don't want to be rude or take something up the wrong way. What makes Creep even more scary is the fact that the guy is on a job. So he kind of just wants the money as well as everything else. And when you're on a job, you do find yourself dealing with people that you otherwise wouldn't because you need to fall in line and just do your job. So if you choose to check this out, ask yourself at what point do you think you would get out and leave the situation? And let me know in comments below if you saw it yourself. But don't spoil it for anybody if you can. Number two, it's one that comes back a bit more mainstream. It's Ryan Reynolds in Buried. I love theatre and films where the person is in one location predominantly. I think it's really cool. It challenges the actor, it challenges the production, and it's just creative beauty unless you mess it up which does happen <coughs> and my channel runs devil even if you're like me and you're not claustrophobic the idea of being buried underground with nothing you can do is just terrifying and the story itself goes in twists and turns it's just cool ryan reynolds is amazing in this and that's all I can really say without giving too much away. Just check it out if you haven't seen it already. And the number one movie you may not have seen that I think you should watch this Halloween is my favorite movie of all time. And some of you are gonna be scared off it because again, it's a foreign language film. It's okay, it's okay, you can do this. It's Battle Royale, a Japanese film which inspired a ton of Hollywood remakes, kind of. They didn't admit to it, but there's The Hunger Games and Divergent and that one where everybody was, I don't know, you get the idea. It's set in a dystopia in which every year a class from a school is just taken out of their lives and they're put in the woods and they all have to kill each other until one person remains. But what's really cool is you get invested in all the different characters and there's loads of different things going on and you ask yourself, what would I do? Where would I go? Would I be a hunter? Would I be a fighter? Would I defend? Would I try and save everybody? What would you do? And that to me makes the best 
kind of horror film. So I hope you guys like that list and you find something that you can watch on Halloween night. What scares people is extremely subjective so let me know in the comments what scares you, what movies you'd recommend and feel free to engage with one another in a respectful way. Shout outs to a couple of patrons. We have John Gibson and his wife Rachel. This is them at a Billy Idol concert a few weeks ago and they are so cute. I've seen them on their YouTube channel with their dog and hashtag couple goals. Thank you so much, John. Next up, we have Jason Moore, and Jason wants to use his shout out this month to honor his late mother. Lois passed three years ago and her birthday was on October 25th. Jason would love if you could check out the American Lung Association's website, and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. And a big thanks to Jason for supporting the channel. And remember, go buy some candy today if you can, because it's gonna be harder to buy candy tomorrow. And do turn on your notifications because it's gonna get spooky up on my channel this week. Bye. Do you ever get the feeling like you're being watched? Like something has its eyes on you. Hi. Scary, 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 scary thing. You're so scary, you need a bath. You know, when you- I Scary, scary thing, so, so scary. I don't know. Well, he's gonna go and have a bath now. No! Dog horror movie.